Hello and welcome back to Rupel Boom or Bust. With Rupel Boom in the Jupiler Pro League in Belgium. In the last episode, we obviously we were in the January transfer window. We played two matches on camera. We lost both of them 2-1 in unconvincing fashion. Since then, we have played four matches. We've won every single one of those four matches. And we've done a bit of transfer business as well. Three players have been brought in between the end of last episode and now. And by now, I mean the 31st of January. Diego Pucky Pucci Pucci, an Italian defensive midfielder who has been brought in on loan from AC Milan, currently out injured with a tight hamstring. But I think Pucci is probably going to be quite good for us. He's not necessarily the Pacoma Zazua replacement, but I think he can do a job in the middle of the pitch. We've also signed ourselves another Georgian, this time a right winger and striker, Gaga Archavadze, maybe. He's gone out on loan to Mallorca, and they're paying most of his wages, if not all of his wages. No, we're paying... We're paying his wages? Why are we paying his wages? He's probably on a lot of money, isn't he? He's on a reasonable amount of money. Basically, we brought him in on a free transfer, similar to the other Georgian guy who we signed in the last episode. My assistant manager or somebody just found him and went, I think he's good, so we put in an offer, we brought him in. And finally, we have brought ourselves a Belgian footballer as well, actually purchased with real money and everything. Dan Heymans has joined from Vaslan Beveren. He has cost us £130,000. I think that is probably all it is, yes. And I think we've paid it all in one lump as well. We've not split the cost or anything like that. But yeah, Heymans is in. He is basically, he's been brought in for two reasons. First reason is he's Belgian. Second reason is he's a central midfielder. He's already played a few matches for us, three in total, scoring a goal. And I think he got an assist as well. So Heymans might turn out to be a decent signing. Plus, he's only 25. Some other transfer news as well, if we have a quick look down here. Joseph Noachukwu, possibly, I will never get his name right until we start playing him, basically. He's gone out on loan to Heartland FC in his native Nigeria. They're paying most of his wages, I think. Are they? They're not paying £150. They're paying some of his wages. He's going to hopefully get some more football. He's played 39 or 31 games last season, scoring nine goals. Hopefully he can do something similar this year. So, results in between episodes have been good for Mohamed Bakayoko. He has scored six goals, I think, in four games. We beat Ustenda 3-1, and it was Bakayoko, La Rosa, and Faye with the goals. We then beat Vestaluf 3-1, Bakayoko and Faye with two in this. We then beat Circle Bruges 5-0. Heymans gets his first goal for the club. Shema actually put in a decent performance once, scoring a goal. Bakayoko getting himself two, both of them in injury time. CO also on the score sheet, and then we beat Ghent 2-0. Mohamed Bakayoko once again scoring twice in this one. Bakayoko is starting to play really well. Six goals, two assists in just four appearances and one off the bench technically. So uh, yeah, Bakayoko might be replacing Big OD sooner than I was expecting. Those results also mean that the league looks quite good. A bit better than what it did at the end of last episode, but we are once again behind Antwerp. Standard Liège have drawn a lot of matches this month. We've obviously won all four of our matches. Antwerp, I think, have won most of their games. So yeah, we've kind of clawed our way back into this little fight at the top of the table. There is still this worry that we could drop down below Genk into fifth place and then have to go through the horrible Europa League playoff nonsense mess league that we always seem to get stuck in and do not so well in. So yeah, if we can finish top four... I'll be very happy with that. Right then, and elect are our first opponents of this episode. And I've just seen that Ghent have beaten Antwerp, which means if we beat and elect, we go joint on points with Antwerp, but we go on top of the table on goal difference because we have positive 10 goal difference ahead of Antwerp. So quite a lot riding on this match already. Andre will be in goal. Wagner, Sabai, Mazzari and Elizalde at the back. Heymans and La Rosa in the middle of the pitch. Shema and Polizzi on the wings. Bakayoko and Faye up front. The Mohammed boys, that's who we've got up front today. On the bench, we do have Dahuahulu is there. We've also got Sio, Breck Peters, Bernard Valinden and Giacomo Desi. And so is Matthias Stucky as well, because we kind of always want a goalkeeper on the bench, just in case. So we've won our last four games and we've won it well. We haven't struggled too badly in any of them. We've conceded some goals, but we've done reasonably well. Andelect have just lost a match apparently, but they've also won three of their last five. So they're starting to turn things around. Have they started to climb the table? Where are Andelect? They are 14th. So they're still down the wrong end. We are playing so well at the moment that we are starting to sell out Antwerp Stadium which is ridiculous. It's 14,530 capacity, I think it is. Back post is Shema, 
and Shemmer is there making it 1-0, just six minutes on the clock. We beat Anderlecht like it's fun to do. I imagine it probably is quite fun to do, unless you're Anderlecht. But we are 1-0 up already. Shemmer has suddenly started to learn how to play football in uh, Belgium, which is good to see. His second goal of the season. Free kick for Joel Sabai to take. He's a big unit, isn't he? Joel Sabai, Ford to Heymans, the new January signing with the ball. Ford to Luca Polizzi. Plays it through. Mohamed Bakayoko in on goal this time. The goalkeeper, Van Krombruge. Good name. A good Belgian name as well. Makes the save. It's going to be a corner. Luca Polizzi takes it. Right-footed corner. Joel Sabai's there. Doesn't get it on the Ivorian's head. Are we going to come back with this? Weidner's going to have to go down the right-hand side. He's running it, which is something I wasn't expecting. He's got round one. Sabai as well finds La Rossa in the middle of the pitch. La Rossa's effort goes just wide of the post. Still 1-0, but we are looking very, very bright at the moment. So bright, in fact, that we are coming forward again. Polizzi with this. Right-hand side crosses in. Mohamed Fay is there. And a lovely cushioned header from the Spaniard makes it 2-0. His 20th goal of the season. He's the top scorer in the league. How good is Mohamed Fay? So good, in fact, he's probably going to leave soon, isn't he? But if we get like 10 million for Faye, I, I would be reasonably happy with that. Maybe 20. If we got 15 for Zazua, some Chinese team would play 20 million for Faye. Bakayoko with a free kick for us towards Mohamed Faye again. And Mohamed Faye has made it 3-0, half an hour played against Anderlecht. Anderlecht have bro are broken, right? Are Anderlecht broken in real life or just in my game? Because... We are just battering them every time we play them, apart from when we played them in the Croaky Cup final. Almost at half-time, Anderlecht possibly with a chance. They're coming forward with it. I say coming forward, they're still deep in their own half. DeWolf, back to this man's name. DeWolf again. Common, Commonencia, maybe? Goes long towards Andre. This is, this is a worry. Andre, what are you doing? Just get the ball clear. He's kicked it upfield. He's found a white shirt. Not good to see. Lokessa. He's running down towards that right-hand side. Elizalde's with him. Witchery's there. Ginger Man crosses the ball in. Back post header from Strassen goes well over the bar. An absolute sitter, apparently. 3-0 to Rupal Boom against Anderlecht at half-time. Let's score three more. Let's beat him 6-0. No changes at half-time. I am looking at bringing on Big O.D. for possibly Bakayoko. But Bakayoko's playing so well. Faye's on a hat-trick as well. So we can't really be bringing too many players off. When we're playing so well against Anderlecht, we've had another early chance in the second half, but it goes wide from the corner. Heyman is struggling. He's taken a bit of a knock, or maybe he's just a bit tired. Mazari and Sabai not playing very well either, but I don't really know why. Polizzi, corner comes in. Sabai is there, headed just wide of the post. It is all Rupal Boom, isn't it? Final 20 minutes of the game. We are going to do this Bakioko for Dehuahulu sub. We're also going to do... Mazari for Sio. Sio isn't as good as Mazari, but Sio is still a very good central defender. Do we also do Heyman's for Breck Peters? There we go. All of our subs. 20 minutes to play. We're 3-0 up. What's the worst that can happen? Throw for Anderlecht. Ait El Hajj. Edge of the penalty area. Sio's there. Kicks him over. Do not be a penalty. It's upfield. Mohamed Faye controls this. He's got to go backwards to Polizzi. Runs forward. Plays down the wing to Mohamed Faye. Olivier Duahulu's in the middle. Faye's just managed to dodge a tackle. Or has he? The ball is cleared. Shema has this. Down the right-hand side. Number 10. Or 20, sorry. The Georgian finds Mohamed Faye. He's hit the post. Polizzi's there and he's missed an open goal. How has Luca Polizzi not put that in and made it four? Well, it looks like we've got our business done in the first half. We've got six minutes left to play. Mitrovic's headed effort hits the bar. We've got lucky there. Elizalde gets the ball clear. It looks like it's going to be 3-0 then against Anderlecht. We are top of the Jupiler Pro League for a second time this season. On goal difference, but it's 13 goals that we're ahead of uh, Antwerp. What a performance. What a performance. Schemmer scored. Faye got two. Polizzi probably should have scored as well. We should have won four or five nil. We got three points. So with 27 games played of the regular season, 16 wins, 6 draws, 5 defeats, exactly the same record as Antwerp. Three points behind us is standard Liège who have lost one extra game, which I think might have been against... It wasn't against us. Did they beat us? Did we... We've lost... We lost to standard Liège. We have to play them again. So that's going to be an interesting time. We... I guess you could also say Club Bruges and Genk still fighting for this. Genk beating Antwerp, keeping them in this chase... Club Bruges beating Eupen, keeping them in the chase as well. But anything below fifth, I think, might be a little bit too much of an ask because that's nine points. 
Match number two then. We are still currently top of the league, but that's mainly because Antwerp aren't playing until tomorrow. So uh, we need to make sure we do our job away from home against STVV. It will be the same back four of Andre Weidner, Sabai, Mazzari and Elizalde. The midfield remains Puki. Remains Puki? Puki's coming in. It wasn't Puki last time, was it? He was on the bench. Puki comes into the starting eleven with La Rossa. Shemmer and Polizzi on the wings. Big O.D. and Mohamed Bakayoko today will be the strikers. Faye is currently out injured. Dan Heymans has dropped to the subs bench today. I did have Maurizio Pochettino moaning to me about this man here, Danny Calcetara, that I am, I'm not playing him enough, um, and he's right. I don't really know why he's here. He's free. He kind of just gives us another option. He might come off the bench today. Also, he's 18 years old with a wonderful moustache. I feel like we've played STVV about 15 times on camera. I seem to play these all the time for some reason. I don't know why. But they are actually not a terrible side. I think they, in real life, they're kind of like an up and down side. Sometimes they're sort of 14th in the table, sometimes they're 7th. They're kind of doing a decent season at the moment for uh, STVV. Hopefully we can do our job, pick up three more points, and then hopefully Antwerp will lose their game tomorrow against OHL, which I suspect probably isn't going to happen. Ten minutes on the clock, and STVV have a throw deep in their own half. They've gone long. Van Dessel now has this ball. La Rossa has stolen it off him. And now Polizzi finds Mohamed Bakayoko. Bakayoko across, finds La Rossa. Forward to Puki to do a Hulu. Oh my word, what a finish that is. Arba Shema has just scored his second goal of the episode, his third of the season, his first of the game. We are 1 0 up away from home against STVV. And Shema is proving to me that he was not. As bad as he, I thought he was after the first few games. He has turned on the style recently. You know sometimes when you play football manager, stuff like that happens and it just kind of catches you off guard? Shema has been doing this. Just He'll just do something magnificent. He scored twice already this episode. Not exactly an action-packed first half of football, but the only action really comes from our Georgian winger who scores the only goal of the game. We're going to go straight into the second half. Looking at the match rating, Sabai... Puki and La Rossa all not playing particularly well. Bakioko's picked up a knock also. That's a concern. Faye's not out for too long. He's out for about a week and a bit. So he's probably only going to miss this match. Maybe one more afterwards. But if Bakioko is also injured, this could be a concern. Shema with the ball. Gets tackled by Tripodelli. And now Sabai has it for us. Back to Joel Sabai from La Rossa. Shema once again. Weidner's making a run on the right-hand side. He eventually does get that ball. Dennis Weidner crosses in. Shema's there at the front post. He could have got... Oh my, what's happened there? Do a Hulu scored. Big OD's managed to score. And I'm pretty sure Tripodelli set that one up. Also pretty sure Tripodelli's a player who I signed for Sampdoria last season. In fact, I'm almost certain I did sign Tripodelli for Sampdoria. Probably when I was playing football manager, maybe... Second or third season for Sampdoria. Nice to see he's getting us an assist. Elizalde with a throw to La Rossa. He's gone all the way back to Mazzari. It's not the best pass from the Brazilian, but the French Algerian can come forward down the left-hand side. He's a centre-back, which is a little bit of a worry. La Rossa and Polizzi passes to Polizzi, edge of the area, across to Schemmer, and Schemmer once again this time hits the post. Bakioko's not quick enough to get on the end of it. Elizalde collects it. Highlight ends. We're going to do ourselves this change. Bakioko is coming off. We're going to do Danny Calcetara coming on. Do we also take Weidner off? He deserves his yellow card. I don't think we do, you know. It'll be interesting to see how Calcetara does as a striker. We've only played him about four times off the bench. and I'm pretty sure every time has been as a winger. So Calcetara is capable as a striker. So far, he's done nothing. In fact, both teams haven't really done a huge amount. Full time then is just seconds away. Three minutes of injury time. We do have a highlight. Carlos with the ball. Colombato runs in towards the middle. STVV looking like they're coming forward with the ball and Andre has just made an absolute calamity of that. It's 2-1. Andy Kawaya with the goal. He always scores against us. He always scores against us. It's annoying. Let's just hold on. Let's just hold on to this lead. We do hold on to the lead. 2-1 then on the night. Dehuahulu with the winning goal of the game. Shema with an absolute cracking goal also. Two wins out of two. We are going to be top of the table at the end of this episode. We're going to go forward now to just after the Antwerp game just to see whether they managed to keep up with us or not. So at the end of Sunday then, Antwerp did manage to beat OHL, which isn't a surprise to anybody. So they go back on to 57 points. Standard Liège beat KV Mechelen as well. So they are also still chasing. Club Bruges dropped some points. Now 51. Genk also dropping points because they were playing each other. Apparently that's good to see. 
This is now a three horse race for the title and we are hopefully far enough away from this fourth place battle for it to not affect us. By the way, Mohamed Faye's injury, not Faye, uh, Bakayoko's injury is about three to four days. So he's he'll be fine. He'll probably play the next match. So this is what we're left with. Six games left of the regular season. It's going to be another Antwerp Club Bruges because I think those are the two biggest games that we have left. We're also going to have Zulti Warrigan probably in the next episode as well. But those two there, those are effectively title deciders. Although I don't think we are champions until after the little group stage thing. So uh, we've got to play Vaslan Beveren, KV Mechelen and Beershot off camera. I'm hoping for six, maybe seven points out of that. Ideally nine, but seven points is kind of a decent enough target. That will be enough to secure us basically top four. And if we get top four, we get pretty much guaranteed Europe football next season. Thank you very much for watching this episode of RuPaul Boom or Bust. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I will be back next time with more Football Manager and hopefully next time as well. We are going to be top. Hopefully, we're going to finish top of the regular season and then we're going to have to play the championship playoff thing, which is going to be probably two episodes of absolute mayhem. At least we don't have a croaky cup final to worry about. See you next time.